Alrighty, y'all, so I figured that um, this is a common enough problem and I don't really have a video specifically highlighting it. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and put it on out there here on YouTube so that folks, if y'all are looking um, for symptoms of a non-running newer style overhead valve Briggs and Stratton push mower. This one is a 500E series. It is the exact same setup for a 350, 450, um, 500 and 550E series with the push primer start. And if you have a 675 or a 550 with an auto choke that doesn't have the primer bulb, it's a very similar, um, very similar deal. Just the choke linkages and stuff are different. Um, at least in terms of the carburetors. The carburetors are slightly different, but the process of cleaning them is very similar. Um, but I'm going to highlight these lower end ones since they tend to clog a little bit easier and a little bit more often. And they are on the lower end, so if you know send it to a shop or something, you're not going to. You're basically going to pay the price of the mower to do something for a shop rate of which I've seen upwards of $95 an hour to do. So, first off. A lot of this happens usually after um, you have the mower sitting for a little while and you leave gas in it. Um, say if you're, you know, let it sit for the winter and then get it out in the spring. It's the no start condition. And I do customer return mowers. You can follow my channel for other videos on customer return mowers and just lawn mowers in general with a couple of other extra things mixed in. But this one here, you take it to prime it. I do have gas in it which I'll show y'all. There's gas down there. Good gas came straight from the um, gas can. Works great in other mowers, so I know it's good gas. Um, prime it up, and it may crank, it may not, and run for just a couple of seconds. Gonna throw starter fluid in it just to show you that it will start and stall. <laughs> so likely what has happened is that there's some old gas in there. Um, or I have either oil or water build up, but um, the procedure that I'm going to do is very is the same for, say, if you've got old gas in there and it's clogged up the main jet in the carburetor. I'm going to first try doing it without taking off the carburetor from the mower, um, just for those that need something really easy and really simple to where you don't have to really mess with carb linkages and stuff, which isn't that difficult. But we're going to try that first um, just for a really easy fix. Um, and if that doesn't work, we'll go ahead and take the carburetor off. Um, but I've had good experience with just cleaning the jet out um, and these things running good again. So let me get well, my lift buried from all the uh, <laughs> riding mowers that I've acquired and fixed here over the past couple of months. And I'll get it on the stand and we'll look at it. So I've got it on the stand here, and I took the air filter cover off. That's really easy to do. Start, start latched on like that. Just pull the top off here. It just, uh, goes over that tab and just pulls right out. You put it in. There's two tabs on the bottom there. You fit it in, and then just push it back in. Let it lock on the tab. Uh, I'm gonna make this a little bit easier for me. I'm going to, uh, it's got a little bit of gas in it. You can also drain the gas out of the tank, whatever you would like or prefer to do. I'm going to go ahead and do this and just clamp off the gas line with a pair of needle nose vice grips, small vice grips. The next thing I'm going to do, and I'll leave you all right here, is these bolts right here on the bottom. So I've clamped off the gas line. These bolts right here on the bottom are 7 millimeter. There's one right here. And there's one on the back side back there. You could either take 
a wrench or a ratchet and undo them. If you want to, you can put a little like plastic container under there just so that it catches the gas. So what, what I'm first going to do is grab my seven millimeter ratchet and socket. I'm going to undo the back one first since it's a little more difficult. Hopefully my hands aren't in the way. Just fits right on there. Remember this is a metal screw in plastic so whenever you tighten them or loosen them just be careful with them because you don't want to strip out the threads that it has made inside the plastic otherwise you're going to have a leaking carburetor bowl or a carburetor bowl that won't even stay on to your mower. Again, I'm showing kind of the, not the lazy way, but if you don't want to worry about taking off, off the carburetor to do this, you can do this. Um, if y'all want to show me to show a more detailed way of doing this, then just let me know. Oh, my ratchet's actually up against... Ratchet's actually up against the mower, so. Here we go. I'll take this side off as well. I'm pretty good here. And I'm just showing this live so that y'all kind of know how to do it as well. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's seriously just loosening a couple bolts, but some some of y'all that might not be as mechanically inclined like to see it. And, be, and also those that are very visual learners, so that's why I'm doing this. Um, you can also take, now I've got the two bolts off. Let me get my container. And it'll stay up there by itself. So that's not really that big of a deal. It'll stay up there by itself. Um, you can just take either some sort of, honestly I can probably take this ratchet here and just bump it on the side here. Just be really careful when you do. Um, get your carburetor and it's, it's a little gasket there it gets it off so that's now off and this one's probably got a combo of things the gas the gas smells good on it um, but let me see if I can get it in the light here I'm actually I'm gonna let it yeah, most of it's out let me see if y'all can see water bowls inside of there. You can probably see it right, right there, kind of along that line right there. Um, kind of right there as well. So another thing that these plastic carburetors on these Briggs are very bad about is, um, especially with the ethanol fuel, if you use non-ethanol fuel, you won't have the issue um never a bad way to go if you're excuse me if you are using ethanol fuel just make sure that you don't leave it in there more than a couple months otherwise the process of um, water and stuff in the fuel will persist so now the next thing we're going to look at is i don't know if we can see it without the air filter cover i'm going to try and get y'all down there so y'all can see it but there's the float right here. You don't have to take that off. But you see that brass looking thing right there. It's got a little bitty hole inside of it. That's the jet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a needle or either a needle or a paper clip. I use a paper clip. 
So we've got some, we've got gas coming out of it. So it looks pretty clean, but, um, a lot of times you're going to look in that hole. You can get a flashlight and look in it as well. And, um, you're going to find, let me find my paper clip. You're going to find that you're not going to be able to see through the hole that it's blocked. And so very easy to do. Just take a paper clip. I'm going to set the camera right here. There we go. You just lift up the float, take a paper clip. And this one's clean because I can see through it. So that's good. But if there's crud in there, just kind of wiggle the paper clip in there. And um, see if you can get it to where the hole is not clogged anymore. You can see through it. Again, a more involved process is just using carb spray. But um, you know, if you just got water in the fuel, you can essentially just drain it out. There's a ton of water in this gas. So I've drained that out. I might actually drain a little bit more out just to see if I can get it out here. So again, one of two things, or both, uh, water in the fuel, or um, carburetor clogged up. So, should be the issue with this one. Just drain a little bit of uh, gas out of it, because that was new gas I put in. That shouldn't be too much water in there now. Um, so now what we're going to do... I'm going to take this little container back out. And I'm going to show you all this whole step-by-step -step process. This bowl here as well, see those water beads in there? You can take either some carb spray or you can just take the rag. You can just wipe it out. <laughs> In my case, an old pair of jeans. And just wipe it out just make sure it's dry again carb spray works great for this as well just whatever you decide to use and again to test this carb spray and um, starter fluid are very cheap at the auto parts stores or big box stores like Walmart. And looking back on this, going, it's going to go in this way with the indent toward the back. I apologize, the indent toward the front, toward the front. And it's going to fit pretty tight as well, so if, if it acts like it doesn't want to go, it, it does want to go. And you can just use the screws to kind of get it up there. Might have to finger thread these up a little bit with the socket.
I'm going to go ahead and put these, finish putting these back on with the ratchet. Um, and I'll catch y'all in just a second. We will uh, start it up and test it out. All right, so I got it off the bench down here. We're going to test it out. Uh, when you take off the fuel line, put a little gas in it, make sure you don't have any leaks or anything like that. There's also like a porthole under here on the bowl. I don't know about loosening that up. It takes a big Allen wrench. Um, you can use it to drain the fuel out. I don't know how effective that is just because of the way that it's sealed and whatnot um, to drain the gas out of. Um, I'd just take the bowl off if I were you. Um, also, if you let it sit in the off-season, check the oil before you use it. Make sure it's not dark or anything like that. This one's a little over full, but it's not going to be any trouble to get it started. I do have it sitting a little bit on a downslope as well, so that has some things to do with it. Let me give you about, it says three times. I usually just prime the mess out of it. Hopefully it will run for us. Now there's no water in the fuel and we made sure that the jet is clean. I've done almost 200 of these customer return mowers with the new Gregs on them, so I know that that's almost certainly the problem. Sometimes you have to um, get into the carburetor a little bit more. Um, I found one without the bowl on it, but you have to kind of get into, there's a jet inside that you can actually physically take out of the uh, carburetor. I thought I had one in my stash here that I was going to show y'all. And maybe I don't. I'll keep looking around as I talk. Um, yeah, there's a little white jet inside, but I've never had to take that out and I've never really had a problem with it. Nine times out of ten, if I do that, that fixes the issue. So I'm just going to let that run for a little while. Again, you can take off the carburetor. I just wanted to show y'all kind of a really easy way to check and see if there's water in the fuel and if the main jet is clogged. So um, I've got quite a few more of these customer return videos going on. If I see anything unusual, I'm definitely going to document them uh, as I fix them. But I just wanted to give a good clear cut video on um, these new brakes, especially with those small jets and how to keep them unclogged and stuff like that or to make sure that they stay unclogged and if they get clogged how to fix them so if y'all found this helpful uh, if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you like more videos like this subscribe we've got quite a few of them out there uh, if y'all need to see any more how-to videos please suggest them but thank y'all for the support thanks for the comments and the feedback and i'll catch y'all in the next video